I'm finally doing this again. I really didn't want to, but I decided that I would do another one because my mom convinced me to. So, this time I remember I took a poll in DA not too long ago, and I decided why not sharing some tips and tricks that I do for character design. So, for this video I'm just going to be doing some anti-designs because my dark mirror is legit empty and I don't have any character designs as of right now for characters like um well Scourge still exists because I love him but like anti-shadow mine probably looks like garbage but I tried and uh anti-blaze I don't have a name for her yet so she's just gonna be called majestic hair <laughs> so if you hear me call her majestic that's what's going on because I need to compensate for the fact that I don't know what to name her <laughs> but for right now in the video I well you see me constantly going back to OBS and checking is because sometimes OBS freezes and I try to check the frame rate without being obvious <laughs> but I'm extra and I always keep doing it but for the first part of the video I try to make a realistic pose because I kind of didn't know if I would like this design or not so I just block out the pose according to how I think the character would be and that's just really the first few minutes of the video or something like that but I was trying to be fast as I was doing it so this is sped up but in real time I think I took about two or three hours on shadow alone I took less time on the female though probably because I understand but I wanted to do more with her. And for Shadow I decided that I would give him more uh, arm extension or at least show how his hands work. The sketch phase really isn't that important to me. And I believe I did a messy sketch and then a clean up. And I do this sometimes when I do like a messy sketch and a clean up so that way I can see my lines better if it becomes too confusing for me to read. And I also struggle with faces. That's why I usually draw my muzzles flat, but I've been starting to pull back into the fact of making them a little bit more curved. And whenever I do eyes, I always do them separately because it's easier for me to do separate eyes than together eyes. That way I can connect them in the future. And uh, another thing that I'll point out, I'll probably use him to death as an example, is probably my psychopath character. I'll probably bloop him on screen or something. But I draw his eyes in a way that some people think that his eyes are actually apart. <laughs> they're not, they're together. But I'm horrible at drawing eyes that are together. So this is the easiest way for me to draw eyes that are together. For the anti-shadow, I drew his coil similar to shadow because I don't want him to look too different from shadow, but I want him to look pretty similar to shadow. And keeping that in mind, I do kind of play with the eyes a bit and adjust the face to my liking to try to get it to be more like shadows. The nose, I did actually end up changing because it looked ugly. <laughs> and the mouth, I had so many problems with because I wanted to do one set of fangs. I thought that uh, drawing fangs open mouth would be a lot cooler and a lot cuter, but I kept failing. It wasn't that good, and it kind of sucked. And I really didn't mean to do that. And then I also had uh, curious watchers in my room, and they kept on trying to figure out what I was drawing and I was just like I'm trying to do this for a character design practice um you could see the teeth that I was actually trying to draw it was the ones with the fangs clipping the lip or biting the lip but I couldn't do it <laughs> I'm not good at that then I tried doing the ones with smiling and then I just gave up and started doing it on my own but I finally picked one that you'll probably be able to guess which one it is pretty easily. They look pretty angsty. I think they look better on him than the other fangs. So that was the ones that I ended up sticking with after a thousand years of me playing around with teeth. And it's really hard for me to gauge things because I do like fangs, but it's hard when there's a certain character and you have to stick with their personality. 
for this guy. I still don't have a name for him in specific, but I do know that I would really like him to be possibly more edgier than Shadow or something. I haven't come up with all the details, but you can see a lot. I have a lot of references. And the reason for that is references tend to help me. And I've used the same reference that you see right now from Warrior Cats. It's from a map called Mama We All Go to Hell. And I really loved Squirrel Flight's design. I did implement some of Squirrel Flight and Leaf Pool into my main sauna, but it's not very extreme. <laughs> like, I don't feel like uh, you should take too much from my original design, but taking inspiration from it is pretty cool. But I did take the dripping eye effect because I thought that it would be nice to make him have mascara because I gave him like several different personality types. Like I wanted to have an Assassin's Creed emo boy crossover look. I thought that would be more fitting for, for the shadow. <laughs> I'll eventually come up with a bio or something for him, but yeah. This design was also kind of new to me because I don't really like asymmetrical things that much. So it kind of bothered me to see that, you know, I had to make one sleeve tattered, or at least I decided to break out of my comfort zone and finally draw a tattered sleeve or something that was asymmetrical about the design. And that's something that I think is important with character design. You don't want your character, if you draw your characters, usually too symmetrical to always have a symmetrical look. The only way you should want that is if you really don't do symmetricality a lot. I think that's a word. <laughs> but I try to break out of my comfort zone with some characters because, you know, it's always good to have that one exception. And the shoes, I try to keep them close to home, similar to Shadow, but boots at the same time because I love boots. And I tried giving them the little power jet thing that Shadow has later on. And right now I'm just blocking out headphones. Headphones don't really have to be too advanced, they just have to be headphones. I also blocked out the ears and anything that just basically needs my attention and I'm checking all my references to see if there's anything else I want. I think I added a bit too much, but it's not too crowded on him. So I'm glad I didn't go over the top with him. And I decided to give him these goggles that are kind of like uh, pulse reading goggles. I'm going to say like government-ish goggles that tell him things. Because <laughs> I thought it'd be cool. I also did end up giving him a scarf, but it's really hard to see in the messy sketch. But I'm going to clean it up. And once it's cleaned up, you'll probably be able to see a lot of detail better. And the first thing I block out is the ears because... The ears, I don't want them to be too big or too fluffy. They shouldn't be the main focus because the way I draw things is I try to keep hedgehog ears rather small. They're not really that big. They have to be kind of small and roundish. And then now you can finally see that I'm sketching out the headphones to make them look clearer so that way you can see all the detail in the headphones, why they're important to him. I thought that it would be a nicer touch for me to actually put more detail inside of the goggles because I did get Sonic Riders as inspiration and I really 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 liked Shadow's scarf from Sonic Riders that I think I don't remember if that's in the game because I haven't played it in a thousand years I think I played it once and I thought that scarf looked pretty cool so I added the scarf in because I needed something edgier. <laughs> and I did give him a little hair tuft because I have to. And bags under the eyes because I imagine this shadow does not sleep. He's too edgy for that. <laughs> and from there I'm just edging out and blocking out everything to make it look neater. And what I like to say that's really really important about character design is at this phase or any phase when you're drawing, if you don't like something, it's better to spend up to an hour fixing it, even if you really don't want to, to try to make it look right, rather than just do it in five seconds, say screw it, and then just leave it at that. Character design is about how you make the character look and feel, and you want them to look perfect, so 
I would say if you're doing uh, nothing but a sketch like I was, sit there and take the extra time and initiative to clean up anything and fix things to make them look correct. Because in a sketch, it's going to speak out more to you, so that way if you ever lined it, you want all your information to be clearly seeable. That's why I'll probably spend a long time on fangs, a long time on eyes, a long time on a tongue, because I'd rather those details be perfect and if I were to ever post them, to make them speak out to someone so they understand clearly what I'm trying to translate through art. Um, secondly is markings. When I created the markings, there are some markings that I uh, blocked out with my sketch. Normally I really don't like to block out markings because I feel like I color them in nicely, but when it's a sketch and this is a character you do for the first time, I would recommend if you don't do this in your style, actually spending the time to block out any markings because it helps with placement. And right now I'm going to confuse you by the way I'm doing this uh, jacket. I decided to add tatters and rips and tears and just have fun and go to town with it because I wanted to keep it less from simple. And then I finally blocked out everything else that was important that you wouldn't see me block out in the sketch because I decided to give him pants and everything later and I, as I was going down I kind of got lazy. I didn't want to make his pants go all the way down so I was just like, rip pants, that sounds good. So it actually wasn't really supposed to be in the design, I just felt like I wanted to do that because it was easier. <laughs> but now it's in the design. And for his shoes, I was trying really hard to reference shadows because I really don't reference shadow. And originally I was going to draw like a side by side of shadow and then like my design, <laughs> but then I decided it'd probably be a long video if I just drew, let's say, the original character like shadow together with this anti-shadow and this anti-shadow doesn't have a name so it'd be kind of weird and pointless but one day I will probably draw shadow well he popped up in the video so it's in my google chrome <laughs> and at this point I think I was just going to youtube for music <laughs> that's why my uh, frame rate kind of drops because I tend to try to be careful when I'm drawing because whenever I open up a new tab my my OBS decides to be mean and not want to do that. I also try to give him some kind of hip guard wear, but it comes out looking like he's a robot even though I don't mean it. So I try to communicate it by putting another one on his leg. But I mean, if you want to interpret it as a robot, that's cool. <laughs> And I gave him more edgy aesthetic because this guy is based off of a lot of aesthetic. I don't know what kind of aesthetic you would want him to be based on, but he's based off of a lot of aesthetics. I don't know why, but I never colored in the second hand black like I did the first hand. But I ended up making the second glove completely darkened. I also tend to do another weird thing when sketching is I never use the color black really. I don't like using a straight color like that. I usually try to avoid whenever I do character design going for direct black and direct white. I'll probably talk about it later but I don't really feel comfortable with sketching with something like black or complete white. I've just done colored sketches for years and it just feels a lot nicer to draw it in a different color. So like this color right now is nice. I'm also blocking out all the markings that I feel like are important that I want to have in the sketch that I care about because I want to keep this character looking extremely close to shadow without looking like shadow. I do my best. I'm also still struggling with my tablet because I bought a brand new one because I'm extra. So. Sometimes it decides it wants to move things to the left when it really shouldn't, and it gets me irritated. So, the struggle is real with this tablet. 
At this point, I'm trying to gather a basic color palette because, I mean, if I can get a simple gauge of colors, that'd be fine. Another thing that I've learned throughout the years, or at least that I've recently figured out with my characters, I did actually see a video that talked about this fact, and it's just that all characters that are naturally good characters only have up to five characters your colors or at least three to five that's the thing with good character colors but you can have multiple it just depends on you and if you can make those colors pop I think shadow I only ended up using really five colors I know you see a lot of colors in the color palette range but they're still generally the same color his color palette is generally probably gold red and some variation of black I do this kind of on purpose because even though it looks like I'm adding 700 colors, I'm still sticking to the same guide range. You always want to have your character have some kind of gauge to where they're simplistic color to make them fun and pop. I don't really think that I make any of my characters have multiple colors. I do put gradients, but usually my gradients are optional because I like gradienting things and being extra. So <laughs> that's why I add gradients all the time. And it's no fun, but I uh, tend to try to explain and communicate things like that. Like something simple like that that you do, you might want to inform others that it's an optional thing. And another thing is I try to keep his colors fairly simple. I don't try to put like a thousand and one markings. I don't try to be will have too much communicated with them. I do gradient some things, but I don't really communicate it in a way where it's just, it makes this design very painful. And OBS decided to finally be nice and allow you guys to see me do it in <laughs> faster time rather than that blocky Minecraft <laughs> speed. <laughs> oh no. I also made his mouth blue because I usually never color anyone's mouth other than normal color, so I just want it to be extra and just add a different mouth color because I thought it would be fun. And coloring some parts really isn't all that special. It's just picking out colors, seeing what I like, placing them down, and uh, I do this weird thing where I kind of just tally where I want the colors to go. It just helps me for like if I were to go on another color, I can recognize, oh, it's the same color. It should be that color. It shouldn't be any other color. I'm also going to blind you guys temporarily with uh, a color of red. It's actually, I believe, lighter. No, it's, yeah, it's lighter than the regular, almost neonish red that I used. I don't know why I did that, so don't ask me. <laughs> and I wanted his shoes to be white to mimic shadow shoes because, again, they're still boots. They're just different kinds of boots. And I want it to be kind of like silvers. I don't know why. And then I just correct things as I go along because in the sketching phase, sometimes when I color in sketching phases, I don't really tend to be neat. I did the same thing with my sauna's ref and a lot of other reference sheets. I don't really see a point in being neat on the ref as long as I can clearly see what colors there are. I don't know if you would communicate those stripes I put on the sides of the boots as buckles, but I mean, I just thought it'd be nice and coloring. Some things I do, I don't understand why I do it myself. So the pants and the shirt were kind of exclamatory. I wanted them to be dark. And I know that shadow isn't supposed to be like a bluish color, but the reason why I don't use exact black and sometimes I, well most of the time I do tend to using white, but I don't use exact black because whenever you go to uh, darken something, it's impossible. <laughs> and I don't like using pure white. Let's say I'm doing a commission for someone or I'm trying to shade or color in one of my own characters. Having a pure white character, there is no way to lighten that any further without blinding yourself because it's pure white. 
I know there's probably an argument against it, but that's just what I found because my shading styles, it's kind of hard for me to brighten it up white and darken up black. So those are why I hate black and white personally. It's just a personal preference that I use a different saturated color or a different version of that color. So for right now, I'm just using like all different kinds of grayishes and blacks for his design because I don't have to use exact colors. I was gonna actually be neat and color on the fangs too, but then I just gave up <laughs> life a little bit and I was just like, I'll just recolor it in a white. There's the white color right there. So I just recolor all the fangs again. And then coloring everything else is pretty much straightforward. I just give everything a simpler tone. I keep everything simple. Except for the goggles. The goggles is where I get extra. Because I just want it to color it in so I do the same method I did when I was doing the uh, first Mimi thing that I speed painted on here. And I go ahead and add little details in white. I didn't realize at this point that uh, I was just thinking that it would look okay and then the white part kind of looked weird. So I just kind of went with it and just added some uh, shines because I thought shines would be fun. And then I just keep on adding details. I probably shouldn't have. Because this is something you want to avoid. Now it's going to be like really super hard for someone to try to recreate that. <laughs> probably. So for someone like me, you would want to avoid using a lot of gradients like that. <laughs> a prime example of the, the expression of being extra. So unless it's in your character's design to have gradients or it was completely intended for that gradient to be there, don't ever shade or gradient anything in your character's rough unless it's 100% necessary. And it's okay that if later on, like when you first designed that character, yeah, you wanted it to be permanent, but then later you decided, I don't really want that to be a permanent staple of the design, that's completely fine. You would just want to communicate to others that it's an optional thing. One day I might do like a character turnaround sheet, as that's really taken for granted, but that's just something I thought would be fun. I also turn down the saturation of the character's colors. I couldn't get this exact saturation again, but I felt pretty confident I could try to recreate it. And in the end I ended up adding gradients to try to make the colors pop, but it's in like a separate picture. My prime thing would be always have a uh, extra picture of your design. Now onto the female. This was kind of difficult because what I was going for was like her body being more twisted away from you, but I couldn't do that. So it's the same story as before, just blocking out the pose. I have a lot of issues. I can't figure out how to block out the pose that well. So I end up fixing it after sitting here for a bit and thinking to myself, it looks weird. <laughs> That's just what happens. I have those moments where I think to myself, and it's good to have those moments where you think to yourself when drawing rather than sitting there and just trying to make a pose be what it's not. So I end up communicating the design eventually, making the legs and everything look normal. And she ends up looking pretty good in the end. Because I thought I wasn't going to be able to salvage this pose and I was going to have to start all over because I made it look stupid. <laughs> and that happens to me a lot. Like I'll draw a pose and um, I try to save it instead of just giving up or sometimes I give up and I just don't save it and I realize it's beyond repair. And it's always good to try to experiment with different poses. You never want to have the same pose too much because then your drawings become stiff and they don't give enough life. So for this character, I had read a description because she was a character I bought in an auction in 2015 and I see that I forgot. Well, I actually got all her colors, but I uh, tried to refrain from changing her too much because the original artist who had her didn't really want to give her up but ended up selling her for, I guess, personal reasons. I don't really remember. I might double check and bloop that in the description if it was like a personal reason or not. 
Or I might just keep it secret. I always bloop the original image if I didn't buy it. <laughs> well, if I didn't create it in the description or if it was like a character that I made long ago, I always share the picture of what they originally looked like. So for her, I just kept her design fairly simple and similar. And I didn't really add anything, but maybe uh, eyelid color. I think that's eyeshadow. Uh, yeah, it's eyeshadow. I added eyeshadow and just hair. She's supposed to be anti-blaze. She currently does have a name. I'm gonna look it up because I forgot. <laughs> Honestly, I forget everything. Yay. But for her, her design isn't supposed to be too far over the top. I was going to give her like tufts of ear fur and everything, but I liked her design as is, so that's why I didn't really end up using that idea. And it's okay for me to scrap it or anyone to scrap it because some details aren't necessary. And for her design, I just wanted to demonstrate that less is pretty much more. Her design really wasn't bad, it was just that I wanted to change it because it looked too much like Blaze. And she was actually supposed to originally be a character named Elizabeth, but everyone knows who Elizabeth is now. She's my dark mirror persona, so no. <laughs> this character's name is Lamira. That's what I named her. It's probably going to sound weird and difficult, but her name is Lamira, and I can't tell you where I came that up with that name because it was as random as lottery numbers. <laughs> For this design, I just kept it simple, because I mean, as long as I communicate that she's cat and her original design elements, I really didn't feel anything different that I wanted to stress out. I kind of see Lamira actually being a much more quiet character, rather than this picture, she does seem pretty happy, fun go lucky. I just imagine her being probably more quiet and secretive. And you can see my tablet was a butt and tried to move everything again. Because this tablet has a lot of buttons. It's a mean tablet, but I like it. <laughs> and then from here I just do what I gotta do. I didn't really change the colors. I just kept them fairly the same. I think the only thing that's different was just that I added eyeshadow. Like her hair. Her body color, her shoes, everything is pretty similar. Nothing really different about her. So, oh, I also uh, interpreted her shoes as kind of like heeled boots, just a little bit. Because I assumed that was what was trying to be communicated in 2015, just heeled boots. But I'm not 100% sure. So... I'm just trying to do my best with communicating what I want this character to look like and the best of the design. I do add fur tufts because again she's a, a cat, a feline, so I do communicate a bit of fluff. I did have trouble with the select tool because I think it was set to calculate a certain thing so if you draw too lightly on a tablet it's going to pick up that there's a hole somewhere so I ended up changing it back to zero. And then I'm just adding last minute details. This one was just more or less pretty straightforward. Probably because I draw females more often. I don't really tend to do males that much. I tend to draw girls a lot more because, you know, I feel like since I am a girl, it should be pretty easy to draw girls. Or at least I'm more attached to my female characters, if that makes sense. Because, I mean, there's probably once in a blue moon where I get that one favorite guy and then I draw them for, like, non-stop for a thousand years. Like, for right now, I could safely say that that guy character that I keep drawing forever is probably Kayo. I only get attached to one guy character. That's, that's weird. And that's me. <laughs> and then you can see that I do that same lazy coloring style because, again, this is a sketch. I don't feel like I have to be very neat. But I changed my mind about the eyeshadow and actually made that the eyelash color for the original eye color. And I think I changed her nose color. That was like the last thing I ever changed on her. 
because I thought that a pink would pop out more than a black color. And you see too many characters with simple black colors on their nose and stuff, so I thought it would be nice to change it and actually give her a different color. And I gave her lipstick. <laughs> I keep forgetting the small things that I gave her, but she has a pink nose, lipstick, and eyeshadow. She has like some makeup going on. And then from there, I didn't change anything else besides just coloring it. And this is what I do for a long while, just color placement, coloring. I'm a horrible colorer. I color like a five-year-old, but I like coloring. <laughs> so if there's any part of the drawing process that I like, I just like coloring. I'll sit there for hours and color something. <laughs> or days. Oh yeah, I also gave her fingernails and fingernail polish. I thought that was nice. <laughs> I don't really know. And from here it's just taking colors, coloring them, color placement. And making sure the shoes look okay. I kind of still, I kind of feel weird about the greenish color. Like it doesn't look too bad, but it also looks kind of weird because I've never placed like a green color on a pink character. It seems a bit out of place, but I still kind of like it because it's odd. I think I might give this character another set of attire that's different than this one, but for right now, this is just going to be her main clothes because it's not that bad. And then I also forgot to color the bottom of her chin. So from there, I finish up and I will present the finished images in a bit, maybe. I don't know. Because the character designs this phase took a lot out of me. I'm really tired. Bye!